All right, so in this video, I want to have a look at an online video editing tool called ClipChamp. So I'm not going to go through the process of how we register for it. Simply go to clipchamp.com and then create your account. You can link it with, with a Google account or with a Microsoft account and a number of other things as well. Um, once you're in there, we're going to go to the, and all that I'm going to be using is the free version of ClipChamp here. So we're going to go to creating our first video. When I open this up the first time, it can look a little bit intimidating. There's a lot of things here that, that might um, kind of catch you a little bit off guard. The main thing that you need to be mindful of is your controls that you have over here in the corner. So there I've got controls that I'm going to be using, switching between different options that I have. Um, let me just take this away quickly. And then you'll see there I've got my controls. This over here is actually going to be my video. So this previews the video that I'm making. And then over here, I'm going to do it in red. Here I've got the layers that I'm going to import, the different layers that I can add to my time frame. So in this, there's a lot more that we can do with ClipChamp than what I'm going to show you in this video, but I'm just going to show you a couple of the basic things you can do. So let's start here at the top. When we go to your media, you can add various resources in here. So you can add images in here. You could add... Um, files from Dropbox, from Google Drive, a variety of sources um, from OneDrive, etc. So all of these are going to allow you to add different things. And th this includes images, includes audio clips, video clips, any kind of thing like that. I've just quickly uploaded two items that we're going to be using a little bit later. Please note these are PNG files. So if you see the black around them, that means that they've got transparent backgrounds. I'm going to show you why that is quite a useful thing to do. Then we're going to head over to the screen recorder. Now the screen recorder works a lot, works very similar to any other screen recorder you might have used in the past. Um, you've got your options of screen and camera, camera recording, screen recording, and text to speech. So if you want to add um, a, if you want to add yourself to the, to the recording, it's a good idea to use the screen camera. If I use the screen camera, it tells me where do I want to fit my little box. So I don't have my droid cam set up at the moment, so I can't use my screen camera. Um, then alternatively, you can do a camera recording, which will only record your camera, but we're more interested in doing the screen recording. So if I click on screen recording, it opens up this little dialog box here in the corner, which is the same that's going to happen with the other ones. Um, if you haven't allowed and accepted it yet, if it's your first time using ClipChamp, you're going to have to click on allow and accept, and it'll it'll automatically mean you can use your video camera and your microphone with, um, with ClipChamp. Then recording is really as simple as hitting the red button when you record. Note you've got 30 minutes time limit. So the 30 minutes um, should be more than enough to do anything that you need to do. And of course, if the 30 minutes isn't enough, you can record multiple clips because in ClipChamp, I'll show you how we can stitch these clips together as well. So we're gonna hit the record button and then when I hit the record button, it opens up the dialogue and asks me what I want to record. Do I want to record my entire screen, only a certain window, because I've got a couple of windows open, or do I want to record one of my Chrome tabs? So depending on what you want to record, these are quite useful um, things to have. I tend to use the window recording a lot because that allows me to switch between different Chrome tabs. A lot of the videos that I make um, are done in this way, switching between multiple Chrome tabs. But if I know I'm only going to be in one Chrome tab, um, then I might as well use Chrome tab and select that. So in this instance, we're going to do that. We're going to select the Chrome tab because I want to show you how we can actually use these interactive worksheet examples and make a quick little video recording. I'm going to switch off the tab audio because I don't want to actually add the tab audio to this. Right, so now we're going to say share. And what's going to happen is this is now being recorded. Right, so you'll see there's a blue line here around the corner. That's an indication that it's being recorded. The rest that you see over there is not actually being recorded now. Right, so now that I'm in this interactive worksheet, and if you want to know how we do these, make these interactive worksheets, please go and check our videos on creating interactive worksheets because this is quite a nice way to do presentations. Normally, I would go and I would maximize this um, going into full screen, but my recording is already cutting out this top bit, so I don't need to maximize it. So here I can now go and I can use this to explain certain things, explain that, okay, we're going to drag 
the mouse over there. We're going to drag the cat over there. The dog goes there and the cow goes there. And then we can add, if we've got some interactive tools, we can go and see, say, see, there's the mouse. It is a mouse. That is a cow. And we've got it over there. And because I'm in this kind of mode that I'm using, I can actually add different things. So we can say, let's see what some translations might be. So dog translated to Afrikaans, hond, translated to English. Um, or if we've got cat translated to Afrikaans, cut. So in this way, I can go and I can create quite an extensive kind of explanation of what I'm doing. Let's have a look at something like this. So here I'm going to explain basic maths concepts to the learners. We'll look at five plus four. So this is a way of doing it. I've got visually, I'm going to illustrate it. I'm going to take the five. I'm going to take the four. It's in a little block. And now it's a simple matter of counting. I'll go over there and I can tell them that is nine. Here I'll take the 10 and I'll take a four minus there. And I'll add over here. I can say let's count the purple ones and it's a six. So I think you get the idea of what we want. So once I'm done recording, I just click simply click on the stop sharing. What that means is it tells What's gonna happen is this is now complete. Right. So right. we're gonna say so save and edit. You'll see this blue. Okay. So here we go. We've got the video recording has been has been made. So from this point. Okay, so I can I've got my video that's already been added there for me. Now let's have a look at some of the cool little things you can do with it. So the first thing that I can see is I don't want these little black lines here at the top and the bottom. So I've got the option to crop to full. So in other words, if I crop to full, it's going to fill up the screen and I can now go and move it. If I, if the, what everyone is on the left is really important, or I can move it to the right. If whatever is important, whatever is really important over there, or I can just keep it in the center for this instance, that works perfectly fine for me. I can also, if I want to, of course, make it a little bit bigger and smaller. And that will take away some of the edges, some, some even more of the edges for me. So there I've got a really, I'm filling up the screen nicely. I'm happy with that. I can move it around however I want and see what, and see that this thing is exactly the size that I want it to be. Right. So now that I've got my little image over here, let's see how we can continue with it. Um, how we can continue editing it. Remember we imported some of these images earlier. Now, because these are PNGs, I want to show you what we can do. If I've got a little logo that I would like to incorporate, the little image that I, I want to add to my videos, then the, it's as simple as importing your video and taking this image and dragging it somewhere. Right, so now, now that it's there, you'll notice I still don't actually see it over here. So I'm just quickly gonna mute this. If you want to mute an, a video clip, you just select it and click on that mute over there. And if I play it now, then nothing's happening. You can see my cursor is moving around. I'm explaining stuff, but where is my image? If I follow the timeline, suddenly my image appears, right? And then it's just going to go away again. Okay. So what you can do with regards to this is you can make it stretch it out so that it is actually going to display for the entire duration of it. And then once you've done that, now it becomes editable. So if it's actually only small, a small part of segment of your video, let's say you want to show it only in the beginning as an example, um, then you'll have to move this cursor to where that image is. Once you've done that, you can select the object and modify it. So I'm just going to select it. I'm going to shrink it down. I'm going to put it here in the corner and then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to stretch it. Or well, let's just leave it in there for the first little bit. Now, because we don't want things to happen too harshly, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and add a fade to this. So once I've selected an object, I can click on fade and the fade will allow me to have it fade in and fade out. So I can do the same thing with any of with my video, with my image or with the video. I've got the option to fade it in and fade it out. So let's say I recorded my video and I realized, but I actually went too too slow or I went too fast. If I went too, too fast, which is often the case, we can use, we can actually change the tempo a little bit, but please note, you can't change the tempo by, by a tiny fraction. 
so you'll end up with something that's actually going to be pretty slow in terms of the the act the, the playback necessarily right so um if we just select this quickly i'm just going to change the speed to normal again most of the time you're going to keep your speed on normal so there i've got my little clip i've got my image inserted in the corner so what happens if i've got multiple clips or if i made a mistake somewhere in the middle and i think that for me is one of the things that it happens very often where we record something we make a little mistake and then we have to restart so if i do that you don't need to restart you simply find the spot that you want where you need to make the change select the item and if we right click you'll see there's the option to split now sp what split does is it means it moves these clips into two separate parts so now i can put them next to each other so i've got these two separate parts and i have the option to add um, I'm not going to go into all the details that you can do, but you can do little filters and transitions. So just to show you the transition very quickly, because it is quite straightforward. If I've got a transition that I like, I'll just drag that close. I'll drop it into that plus, And now I'm going to add a small little transition that happens between these two. All right? It's a very quick transition. So you'll see. Right. In this instance, because the two videos are exactly the same, you don't actually see the transition, but there is a transition that's happening. Something that also helps a lot is the ability to add text over images. So for example, here I'm still talking about my first example, but now I'm going to move to my second example. So let's say, well, let's, let's take this, is a, this little bit. I actually decide I don't want to include um, the small segment that I talked about. That one example, I'll find i'll just split it the s is the shortcut key for splitting select that little part that you don't want and then just delete it so there i've deleted that small part i've taken it out of my video entirely so now when i get to this part i'm going to talk about the second example now maybe i forgot to say it maybe it's something and i wanted to add in more detail once i go to the text option i can now drag the text in i'll add the text as an option and it'll, it'll just create a new layer for me. So there's my text. Remember, if I want to edit it, I need to make sure that my timeline is on that. Right, so now I can start having a look at this. Outline shadow, I'm not so sure I like that. So let's try something else. We'll try push through. This might be a nicer option for me to use. So here we're going to add the push through. And this is going to really fill up the screen. And here I can now go and actually say second example and it's as easy as that where i'm now creating my little video there it says second example so here i'm going to explain basic maths con right so then i'd probably if i'm going to use something like push through i won't want to start with it there's second example and it shows for a second and then it goes away again Let's have a look at something like this. and then so here, it transitions into that right so what you you the more you work with it the more you get used to the little tricks that there are to it i'm personally not a big fan of video editing in general so i always want to find quick easy tools that'll get me to where i need to be so in this way i'm using my different layers that i'm building on i've got my text layer here i've got an, a graphic layer over here and i've got my video layer over here and i'm sure you can go much more complicated than this one last thing and i want to show you that I think a lot of people like to add to um, their videos as well, although you need to be careful when you're doing that, is adding music. Now, there's a couple of free options here, but there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of, of, of paid for options as well. And, and then they've also got the nice idea of having sound effects. So let's say we're going to use this gong sound effect. So it's a case of click and drag. I'm just going to drag it in here because I want my whole thing to kind of just start off with a little bit of a gong shift select and you'll select multiple items so now my whole video clip my whole thing just starts off like this right and then there's the audio will come in okay this has been muted now right just to show you quickly what you can do with that now one of the crazy things for me is all of this is entirely free so there are there's one drawback and, and i'm not so sure if it's even much of a drawback when you export the image or when you the video 
when you use the export option, you'll see you are limited to only the one resolution, 480, which is a, which is a pretty low resolution. So this is not ideal for when you want to make, um, when you're designing content for profit or anything like that, then you would love, would rather prefer to be able to go all the way to 1080. But when we are designing instructional videos for our learners, the fact that we're using 480 is actually very useful in terms of data usage. They can actually use low data when they're doing this. So I don't know if it's necessarily a bad thing um, that it that limits you to um, a lower data usage. So that's the one drawback that it has. The other drawback that I would like to point out is the fact that they tell you it is not being saved online. So in other words, um, your video will not be backed up. However, what I have found is if I close this and I go back in, my video is still accessible. So I'm not 100% sure if there's a time limit on that or how long it could be, but um, <clears throat> it's something that you'll have to experiment with. In general, I feel that it's best to sit down, get your video done, and move on to the next thing. So I hope this is going to help you become more comfortable and able to use ClipChamp moving forward.